Hey folks, welcome to Iridian Games, a channel dedicated to all things tabletop. And today we're going to be continuing our desert terrain crafting series by going over how to mix some sand, how to carve some fissures into the modular tiles we built last episode, and how to lay that sand in all the right places. Alright, let's jump right in. So we've got a little workstation set up. First of all, completely unrelated to anything in this series. Tea lights from the dollar store. They have a flickering effect. Put them inside your D&D buildings. And they're set dressing. Okay, now for a ground cover, we're going for this kind of more Saudi Arabian, Northern Af North African desert look with the most traditional stylized sand color. And apologies for the lighting. I don't have a lot to work with right now, but I'm getting more stuff soon. Anyways, uh, we're not gonna be painting our sand or the desert terrain, which is what a lot of people do. We're gonna be using a technique using sand, or a mixture of sand and tile grout. So basically what you do is mix sand and preferably unsanded tile grout, as opposed to sanded tile grout. Now, Two types of tile grout, sanded and unsanded. Sanded tile grout already has sand in it, so it's a little bit less fine. Unsanded grout is completely powdery. And the reason this is such a great technique is because when you lay down sand on a wargaming board, just regular construction sand, the sand you even get in those little Gale Force 9 basing containers for your miniatures, they still, well, not still, but they are not in scale. Those little grains of sand to us are small ankle biting rocks to the miniatures. So the unsanded grout the unsanded grout is completely fine powder. However, the sanded grout already has sand in it. It's not as fine, but it serves our purposes. And the only reason I'm using sanded grout right now is because I couldn't find unsanded grout in the color I liked. So let's talk about color in the mixture itself. So coming back to our little workstation, we have ivory, tile grout. In the color package, it's kind of like a brownish, but it actually is a little lighter than that. And the mixture I'm using to get, achieve this type of color is I'm using that Hobby Lobby sand that we picked up earlier. It's light brown, and I don't know if it's gonna show up well on camera, but it has little, it's decorative place, decorative sand for, I don't know, what the hell kind of projects people are doing with this. Um, but there's little glittery crystals in here that look, I don't know, god awful for our purposes. However, whoops, um, the sanded grout is going to actually cover up a lot of the glittering effects. So what we do, the mixture I'm using is two to one, sand to tile grout. So I'm actually going heavy on the sand because I want the color to uh, come through. However, there is a number of things you can do. You can use uh, cement pigments to achieve certain colors, but I'm not doing that here. So take your sand, get a cup. You don't need to be too precise, but I'm doing it. Now I'm for this board, I am whipping up a huge batch. As you can already see, I've used a couple of these containers already. I'm doing two to like 0.8 parts sand to sanded grout. Two. And busting open this grout. Coming in. A little bit less. And as you can see, it's powdery. It gets everywhere. And you don't want to breathe this stuff because it has crap in it that is not supposed to be inhaled by humans. You put that in there. It gets everywhere, so don't wear clothes you like. And then I'm gonna put the top on this and just, this is not a great technique, mix this bad boy up. Mm-hmm. You guys remember those shake weight videos? Oh, <laughs> Anyways, that was a weird workout pad. Don't use a dollar store 
tub to do your mixing. And don't hold it up to try and show the camera because you'll lose sand, as you're seeing right now. Keep shaking that. We can skip ahead. Oh, and as you can see, we have more sand than we had before. And this said sand is lighter than the final product. And that's because it'll darken as it gets wet, activated, whatever you want to call it. At least we hope so, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's gonna happen because it's happened every time I've done desert terrain. Did one of these flickering lights go out? Oh, there we go. Damn, you get what you pay for. A dollar. Okay, main tool, box cutter. So, there's some undulating hills, I guess. They're not hills, they're just... Whatever. Uh, and I'm gonna put the fissure in between it. So we're gonna have like one tendril, and it's gonna have a kind of spacey, sci-fi-esque design. It's gonna be like slightly reminiscent of, I don't know, vines? So, for the modular board, this right here is probably absolutely, sorry if you can't see it, but I'm right here right now. This right here is probably absolutely as far as I would go um, towards the edge, because what you want to be able to do is blend the terrain in so every all the terrain goes to a baseline before it transitions to the next thing. So you're not having like a hill abutting right here that needs to be blended into the rest of the terrain. Um, as it goes on to another board. Uh, so around the edges, keep things simple so it all goes together. That's actually one of the big drawbacks of modular boards for me. Uh, but I like them a lot because they have a lot of reuse. So this will be like the epicenter of the trimmer that created these weird stylized fissures. We're gonna go way down in there. Make this part really deep. Actually, you know what? Let's do it for the whole thing. Let's see what happens. Okay, apologies for the continual tangent. It's supposed to be about ground cover, and it will be, but first we're gonna do some fissure work. Yes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do to kind of clean up the fissures and kind of bore them out a little bit is use a heat gun. But heat gun melts foam, all foam. So in order to protect the foam around the fissure, we're gonna be covering it in some uh, cheap patching plaster. Now, what might happen is the heat and the heat gun when it blows in the fissure might melt the foam out and under the ground, which might be kind of cool. We'll try to avoid that happening, but if it does, so be it.
Patching plaster. Check. Brush I don't care about. Check. Water. Check. Okay. Load it up. And in we go. This is going to be tedious, but necessary. So all the plaster on this tile is pretty much laid down. Just one more thing you want to do, once it's started to dry a little bit, you want to come in and stipple it. Which is stab it a bunch of times, gently, with your brush, to give it a sort of rocky texture. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be priming all this and Montana black spray paint. The color is sand and the spray paint itself is kind of a higher-end graffiti spray paint so it's going to be about twice the price of your standard Rust-Oleum or Krylon spray paint. Going up for about eight to ten bucks depending on what art supply store you're using. Now, we're going to be doing an abbreviated paint tutorial. Uh, we're going to get into the sandstone rock color more in the following video about hills. So. But the basic idea is we're basing it in the Montana gold sand, coming in with a terracotta color, and covering about 80% of the surface of the rocks with the terracotta. Then I'm going to come in with a raw sienna, cover the other 20%, and then do a pretty heavy overbrush of something I'm using. It's called, the brand is Folk Art. It's called Teddy Bear Tan, uh, which is kind of like a dark beige. And then over that, uh, just hit it with one final dry brush. I'm gonna leave it pretty dark and not do a lot of highlights on the fissures themselves. Because, you know, you're not really gonna see them. After the painting is complete, it is time to lay the ground cover. What I'm shaking right now and trying to explain to you, but I didn't use that audio, is that I'm using a PVA base that I'm going to brush all over the board as I lay the sand. And what it is, is about eight parts water. Actually, no, the base, excuse me, is not eight parts water. The base itself is three parts PVA to one part water, and PVA I'm using is just Elmer's glue. Now I'm showing you some rocks, some small talus uh, ranging from fine to medium to coarse, all woodland scenics, and what I'm probably explaining to you is that I'm going to lay them down in some piles before I lay the sand so we can have some rocks covered in sand. So I begin by painting on the glue the PVA base. And honestly, the only part, the only reason why there's water in there is so that it's easier to brush around. I generally use super glue for larger rocks, but since I have time to wait and there's gonna be tile grout and layers and layers of sprayed PVA glue, I'm not too worried about it. Now, there's gonna be a couple things you need. First is a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. That's pretty much rubbing alcohol. Go for 91% or 99%. And fill that thing up half with isopropyl and half with water. And that becomes your flow aid, which is going to allow the sand uh, to absorb the glue. Then the second thing you're gonna get is a bottle of PVA mixture. So that's going to be, for this I'm using one part PVA to six parts water. 
and the entire process goes like this. As you can see, I'm laying down the PVA base, which is pretty much diluted Elmer's glue. Um, another good alternative for that would be one part Mod Podge, three parts water with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. That's a good basing uh, concoction as well. But I'm just using Elmer's with a little bit of water in it, just spread it around. Then, after that's laid down, I'm coming in with the sand and with a sifter laying that on top. Once that's laid on top, I take a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, spray it all over the sand, wetting it in place, and then coming in with the PVA glue and then just spraying glue all over everything so that will the sand will lock in place and the moisture from the isopropyl alcohol and the PVA glue will activate the tile grout so that will form a second method of control and adhesion working away I like using the sifter you don't need to because it gives an even coat of tile grout and sand and it doesn't come up with any large lumps or undulations to make your crown cover super broken, but you certainly can do that, and I do that a little bit later. I'm actually doing it right now. So, ISO, then PVA, locking it down. What you want to make sure, especially if you're not going to be covering most of your ground cover in grass, you want the misters themselves to be very fine because what will happen, especially with a tile grout mixture, is that if either your ISO bottle or your PVA bottle come, comes out in a line or a thick mist, it's gonna create beads of tile grout. So you're gonna have a beaded texture all over your landscape. So the finer the bottle is in terms of its mist output, the better. Now what I'm doing is because the foam and this was a mistake, um, ended up lying a little beneath the wood, which boxes in the tile itself, Is uh, ended up being a little lower. I'm having to come up with layers of sand and other um, dunes in order to uh, disguise the difference in elevation. Yeah, try to get them to line up when you build it this is not fun. And once all that's done, you'll have your board. Now if your PVA layer is too thick when you spray everything, uh, you're going to, it, it's not going to dry completely clear if it's really thick. So what will happen is your sand will have a whitish hue. That's the dried glue. So, if you see large puddles, get a Q-tip or a cotton ball, just gently place them in the puddle and those two materials will soak them right up. Alright people, that about wraps it up. That's fissures and sand for you. Come back next video if you want to see hills, specifically mesas, or mesas, or mesas, flat things, rock face, piles of dirt that angle down. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit different from how you build your normal hills. So if you're interested in that, check out the next one. And uh, like, share, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching.